Hello. Today, we will be explaining document 8, Diagnostic Applications of Antibody Properties. It's the last document in this chapter for LS students in the Lebanese program. As you know, antibodies are produced by plasmocytes and they are produced against a wide variety of biological molecules such as antigens, which are proteins, or complex carbohydrates. Antibodies have an absolutely remarkable specificity, being able to distinguish among closely related molecules. Due to their high antigenic specificity, antibodies are important biological tools that are commonly used in laboratory medicine and in many medical techniques. These techniques that use antibodies make it possible to detect particular molecules in various biological samples, such as blood, urine, or tissues. So these techniques make it possible to detect either antibodies in serum or in the urine, or antigens also in the blood, in the urine, or in tissues. So what are these different techniques that use antibodies in order to search for these molecules? We have three techniques or tests. The serological test, comprising agglutination reaction and immunodiffusion in gel. We have the immunomarking test, especially the indirect ELISA technique, and we have the immunofluorescence test. These three tests are discussed in our video. These tests rely on the formation of visible precipitating immune complexes. Remember, the immune complex is the complex between an antibody and its corresponding antigen. It's the binding between an antibody and the corresponding antigen. For example, agglutination reaction can be used to detect cellular antigens such as the agglutinogens found on the surface of red blood cells and can be used also to detect microbial antigens, antigens expressed on the surface of some bacteria. Pardon. <clears throat> Concerning the immunomarking test or immunolabeling method, it relies on the coupling of a reagent with an easily identifiable marker. The ELISA technique is a highly sensitive test. By ELISA, it is possible to detect very low amounts of antigens or antibodies by using an enzyme coupled reagent and a colorless substrate that it is transformed by the enzyme into a colored product. We will explain the steps of this technique in the following slides. Concerning the immunofluorescence test, it allows the detection of cellular antigen antigens expressed on the surface of cells on uh, tissues like, for example, cancer antigens. Let's start with the uh, first uh, test, which is the serological test. We have the agglutination reaction. What is its principle? The addition of specific antibodies to a suspension of elements carrying the corresponding antigens causes agglutinations of the elements. It is thus possible to detect the presence of antibodies in a serum when we add the corresponding antigens. And also, we can identify an antigen when we add a ready-made antibody or when we add the suitable test serum. The agglutination reaction is demonstrated by adding two antigens placed on a slide serum containing antibodies, or when we add in a test tube 
antigens to a serum that may contain the corresponding antibody. The result will be the formation of insoluble immune complexes that appear as aggregates visible to the naked eye. And uh, these aggregates are due to the existence of two antigen binding sites, as you know, in each immunoglobulin molecule. As you can see here, the antibodies in blue agglutinate the red blood cells, forming aggregates that are visible to the naked eye. So the application of agglutination reaction, the first application is the determination or the identification of the blood group of the ABO and rhesus systems, where we can use monoclonal antibodies, anti-A, anti-B, and anti-rhesus to detect the presence of the corresponding agglutinogens on the red blood cells. Monoclonal antibodies, mono one clonal clone, means antibodies having the same specificity. They derive from the same clone of plasmocytes. These monoclonal antibodies are produced in the lab and they are used in order to detect or to identify agglutinogens. Also, the agglutination reaction can be used to diagnose various infectious diseases, such as the typhoid, brucellosis, syphilis, etc. As you can see in the first figure, we have two blood samples, one showing a negative te a test or negative result, and the second showing a positive result. We suppose that these two samples, to these two samples, we add anti-A antibodies. In which sample do you observe an agglutination reaction? Of course, in the second, since we have in, in white, the white color indicates the formation of immune complexes, and uh, which means that agglutination occurs, which means that anti-A antibodies that are added, they agglutinate the agglutinogen A in this blood sample. Therefore, this blood sample belongs to group A. However, the added anti-A to this sample shows no agglutination reaction, which means that th this blood sample doesn't contain agglutinogen A. Therefore, this blood sample doesn't belong to group A. It may belong to group B or to group O. So in this way, by using the agglutination reaction, we can identify the blood groups. Another example on agglutination reaction is the serodiagnosis of salmonella uh, or uh, of typhoid, typhoid caused by salmonella typhi, the bacterium salmonella typhi. The diagnosis for typhoid relies on the screening for anti-salmonella antibodies in the serum of the patient. That's why a suspension of killed artificially colored salmonella is mixed with the test serum in a tube. So we have two tubes. In uh, both tubes, we mix the serum of patient one here and the serum of patient two in this tube with uh, killed salmonella typhi. After incuba incubation, after a certain time, the suspension is observed. If the bacteria are agglutinated, like in tube one, we see the aggregation, the granules indicating immune complex formation. So if the bacteria are agglutinated, it means that antibodies specific for salmonella are present in the serum. Thus, the patient is infected with salmonella and the diagnosis is confirmed. And if 
the bacteria remain free like in tube 2 it means that the serum does not contain anti salmonella antibodies thus the patient is not infected with salmonella so here we have used a glutination reaction to detect the presence or the absence of antibodies in the serum of patients in order to confirm the diagnosis concerning some infectious diseases we pass to the second technique in the serological test which is the immunodiffusion in gel its principle it is a method used to verify the specificity of an antigen antibody binding <clears throat> for that antigen and antibody solutions are placed in separate wells on the agar gel we don't have a test tube but we have an agar gel a gel where uh, we find wells we have a central well and peripheral wells the antigen solutions are placed in the peripheral wells while the test serum or the antibody solutions are placed in the central well now the solutions of antigens or and antibodies diffuse freely in the gel and give rise to precipitates the main advantage of this technique is that it allows direct comparison of different antigen preparations we can uh, directly identify antigens so we place the various antigens in different wells arranged on a circle whose uh, center is uh, hollowed out of a well where the antibody solution or the test serum is introduced the binding of an antibody with its specific antigen forms an immune complex observed in the form of a gray arc since we obtain a gray arc between the central well containing the test serum and antigen D therefore this serum contains antibodies anti D and since there is absence of arc of precipitations between the central well and antigen A the central well and antigen B the central well and antigen C this means that this serum does not contain antibodies anti A or anti B or anti C it only contains anti D antibodies so the formation of the gray arc confirms the presence of specific antibodies to a certain antigen same here the formation of the gray arc between the central serum and the antigen M indicates that the test serum here contains antibodies anti M so the formation of a gray arc indicates an agglutination reaction the formation of immune complex and confirms our diagnosis an application on uh, immunodiffusion in gel technique we use antibodies against beef serum albumin a protein found in the serum of the beef the beef serum albumin the antibodies against this albumin are put with various antigens which will meet by diffusion so the used substances are in red here in red in the central well we add a rabbit serum containing anti BSA antibodies the rabbit serum recovered three weeks after BSA injections so we injected the rabbit with beef serum albumin beef serum albumin is considered as a non-self 
to the rabbit. The immune system of the rabbit will produce, or the plasmocytes of the rabbit will produce anti-beef serum albumin antibodies. So now the serum of the rabbit contains anti-BSA antibodies. So we place the rabbit serum in the central well in red. In blue, we put a horse serum. The horse serum contains protein or albumin specific to the horse. Orange, we use the horse serum albumin. So here in blue, the horse serum, the whole horse serum, in orange only the albumin of the horse serum. In black, we put the whole beef serum. In white, we put the beef serum albumin. In yellow, we put the whole rabbit serum. And in the purple well, we put the albumin of the milk. So we have different antigens, albumin of the horse, albumin of the beef, and albumin of the milk. And we have different sera, serum of the horse, serum of the beef, and serum of the rabbit. We expect to have these results. No arc precipitate, precipitate is observed between the rabbit serum containing BSA antibodies and between the horse serum in blue, the rabbit serum in yellow, and uh, the milk albumin in purple and the horse serum albumin in orange. However, two gray arcs are clearly observed between the rabbit serum containing anti-BSA antibodies and the beef serum, which also contains the BSA and the, B, the BSA. So it is logic since the serum of the rabbit here contains anti-BSA antibodies. And in uh, the white well, we have the BSA albumin. So the BSA albumin will diffuse and the antibodies in the rabbit serum will diffuse. They meet here, they aggregate and they form a gray arc. Same here, the anti-BSA antibodies migrate and the beef serum contains only the albumin. So the albumin will migrate and uh, antibodies and albumin meet together and form immune complex visible to the naked eye in the form of a gray arc. So we can say that the sera of the different species used in this experiment have antigens specific to their species. Given the absence of an arc, therefore anti-BSA antibodies cannot react with antigens of the above species. This confirms that antibodies are specific for antigens or for the epitopes of the antigens. So the anti-BSA antibody in the rabbit serum is specific for the albumin from the beef and not for albumin from milk or horse. This also confirms the fact that antibodies are specific for the antigens or for the epitopes of the antigen. Thanks for listening. In the next video, we will be explaining the ELISA technique and the immunofluorescence test.